Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. I'm back at our Dover Court project and I wanted to show you the progress that's been happening on this site over the last couple months. It's been a while since I did a walkthrough and a lot has changed. The last time I was here, we still had the old framing inside. We had poured the footings for the walkout. But since that point, all of the addition has been done. We've started on the interior framing and we're almost complete on the interior framing and ready for rough-ins for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Before we get into our video today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let me walk you around and show you what's going on. Before we do the walk around, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the permit process and some of our development charges. We now have our building permit in hand. It took us about four months to get our permit because we went through some revisions and some changes and back and forth with the city. We were also unsure of what the final tally would be on our development charges. So I wanted to give you guys that update. Our development charges came in at around $280,000. Our education charge came in at around 20 grand and our park levy, which is based on 5% of the after repair value of the property, based on a city appraisal, came in at around $120,000. So in total, we paid $404,000 just in those fees in order to be able to, for them to issue our building permit. So um, for those of you that are doing projects and uh, are looking at doing development, just be aware of those development charges. They can add up very, very quickly. But those have all been paid now and we've got our permit in hand. So there's really nothing holding us back from forging on with construction. So I'm really excited to show you guys around and what's been happening here over the last couple months. So as we come through the front door, I wanted to just spin you around and show you what's happening here at Dover Court. So as you can see, our framing is done on the main floor in terms of the floor assemblies. So we took out all of the old framing and we put in all new 14 inch TGI joists. And these span from wall to wall. This house is about 24 feet wide. So we were able to span the joists the entire distance. And that allows us to place interior framing walls wherever we want because we have no load bearing in the center of the property. Now you can kind of see there the LVLs, which are bolted to the brick wall and then the joists, the TGI joists hang off the LVLs. And the reason the LVLs are necessary is because they give the house lateral support and tie into the old brick and then the joists hang off of there. So that was quite a bit of work for our framers, but uh, they did a great job and now we're ready to do all of our interior framing. So where I'm standing right now is going to be the main floor unit and the main floor unit is going to be all one unit. This is going to be a three bedroom, two bathroom unit with in-suite laundry. So this is the addition. This is where the old garage footprint used to be. And we've captured all this interior space. And you can see here that we had to use steel framing because we're within a certain distance to the property line. And therefore this wall has to be made of non-combustible material. And that means structural steel studs. That means 5 8 dense glass on the exterior and that means 5 8 drywall type x drywall on the interior you get a really good idea of how big this main floor unit is going to be and we're super excited to start all the interior framing here and get this all buttoned up we're adding some windows obviously a window is being added there and this one is being closed in this is where the kitchen will be in the back section here will be the three bedrooms and the two bathrooms. The kitchen here, as I mentioned, there's going to be some built-in cabinetry on this wall. And this will all be opened up for living and dining space. Uh, we decided to keep the brick fireplace. We're going to scrape down the plaster and take it off that wall. And we'll probably do an electric insert into that fireplace. But um, tenants generally love exposed brick, so anytime we can get exposed brick in a property, we'll always try to do that. So this stairwell will be closed off uh, from the main floor. There will be no access to the stairwell, and we have to fire separate the stairwell from this living space here. So I'll walk you upstairs and show you what's going on before I do that. So this is where the second floor and third floor entrance will be. That window will convert to a door and then this wall that I'm standing on basically will be closed in. We're planning to capture some of this space here as utility space. When this wall is closed back in, we'll most likely have all of our electrical meters in this room here with a door. And that way, if we have a need to access 
the electrical meters or any of the electrical systems, uh, we can do that from the central location of the, of the main corridor and the main entrance. As we come up the stairs to the second floor, you'll see that this is still open to the elements. Uh, we're just talking with the architects and engineers about how we're gonna finish that off because that's a landing that uh, is going to be an exit for the third floor. But this is the entrance to the front one bedroom apartment. There was a bay window here and we had to close this in. Structurally, it was not in very good condition. So instead of trying to rebuild it and redo the structure, we just closed it in and made this a flat wall, which has got a nice big window in it. So where I'm standing right now is the living room, dining room and kitchen in this unit. The uh, fireplace is the same here. We're gonna try to scrape that down and make that look really nice for this, for this suite. Same electric fireplace insert. And then as you walk back here, you've got the bedroom here and closet right there. And then this is the laundry area. And then you've got your bathroom here. So our bathroom will be a tub on the back wall and then a toilet here and a vanity there. So a nice size little unit, probably uh, 450, 500 square feet which is a decent size one bedroom for Toronto. So now as we go back out of this unit, um, there's a couple walls missing here still. There will be a doorway here, and this will be the entrance to the two bedroom back unit. So there'll be a front hall closet here, a little linen closet right here, which is gonna be fun as that angle. And then we walk down the hall, we've got one bedroom here. There'll be a, a closet right there and this will be another space, a storage space that could be another closet or just uh, where a dresser or something goes. On the back side of this wall is the one bathroom. So this is a two bedroom, two bathroom. This is the other bedroom. That will be the closet in there, obviously. And then we've got the second bathroom right here and laundry. And then over here, we've got the kitchen uh, there'll be an exit door there. So the exit door will lead to the exterior fire escape. Big windows off the back, the door to the back deck, and then this all becomes living and dining space. So this will be a nice sized unit. And above here, you see the joists change direction because above here, the building steps back a little bit and this will be the third floor deck off the back unit. So those joists can be smaller. So this floor is all framed up and pretty much ready to go. And this one is the most complete of all the floors so far. The third floor is quite open to the elements still. We are still in the process of framing up the third floor. But where I'm standing right now used to be basically the back wall. This was the old section of the front of the house. That is being maintained. We're going to be trying to capture some of this space right here. The headroom is quite low and this is where there is some kitchen cabinetry going right here. So those windows will have to come up a little bit. So we wanna to try to capture this space cause it's only about six foot two, six foot three underneath there. So we're gonna to try to get that arched ceiling and capture all of this space so that we can have a little bit more headroom. And then all of this is staying put and we're going to be framing all of this section up in the back to accommodate for the two bedroom apartment. So here you'll see that this is the secondary exit for this front one bedroom unit. And there'll be a landing on this area here. And then the exit staircase will move down in this direction. So, Still some work to be done there. The big hole at the bottom there is the walkout for the basement. But just to give you an idea of the layout up here, this is kind of living dining space. There'll be a bathroom back here. These windows are actually getting closed in and then there'll be the laundry and this will be the back bedroom. So that big window opening right there will be for the bedroom in this front one bedroom apartment. And as we come around the stairwell, uh, there will be a utility room right here, which will service the whole house, the boiler and everything will sit on the third floor. And then you'll enter the back unit, which will be the one bedroom, one bathroom back here. 
So that's the secondary exit, which will head down the side wall as a secondary means of exit for this unit and the main floor unit. And then off the back here is gonna be a patio door and we'll have a nice deck off the back for the third floor tenant. So this will be a really nice unit. We're planning to put two skylights in here. Um, so lots of natural light up here on the third floor and this will definitely be a sought after unit. So I'm down in the basement now and this is the least finished area of the house and there's a specific reason for that. We are waiting for the city of Toronto to give us a locate on where the drain and the sewer line comes into the house. We, when we were doing excavation and underpinning, we can't seem to find where the sewer line is, which is good news really, because that means that it's probably lower than what our existing basement is right now. So they're gonna come out, they're gonna scope the line from the city side and give us a locate on where the drain is. Once we know where the drain is, we can attach all of our interior plumbing in the basement, and then we can put down the gravel, the insulation, the in-floor heat, pour the concrete pad, and then we can finish framing on the interior of the basement. So that's why the basement kind of looks like it does right now. We're also waiting for our contractors to finish the side walkout and the back walkout but they have to wait for the plumbing to go in before they can do that. So that's what's essentially holding up this section of the build. So as you can see, uh, the basement is all underpinned and the underpinning sections are marked here on the wall. If you haven't seen the underpinning video that I did, I did a walkthrough of Oak Mount and the underpinning process. So I'll leave a link in the description there, but you can see on the wall, the one, two, three, and that goes all the way around the foundation wall and they basically dig this out in sections and then re-pour in sections so that no part of the foundation is ever compromised while we're doing that. But you can see the ceiling height we were able to gain here. The old concrete and the old block foundation sits around here and then all of that new height is what we've gained. So we gained about three or four feet. Down in the basement you can also see that we've been able to clear span the joists from side to side. And so that allowed us to remove all of the interior columns that were here. As well, you can see that we put in this new beam, which picks up all of the brick load above it. And so therefore we were able to remove this wall that was here separating that old cold room from the rest of the basement. In the back section, what we've got is the new addition. And so we were able to capture that square footage, take the garage down, but then we had to excavate all of this out and re-pour a new foundation. So the new foundation is completed. There's the two doors for the back walkouts for the, for the basement units. So to give you an idea of the layout, basically where I'm standing is the dividing wall with the front unit and the back two units. There'll be, uh, the back two units will be split right down the middle and there will be one bedroom units. So I believe the bedroom is here, then the bathroom, and then we've got the open living space in the back and the kitchen, same thing on this side. And then as we flip around, this will all be the front two bedroom unit. We also did something a little bit unique in that we roughed in the services for a future laneway suite. So we put a four inch sewer line and we also uh, put in two three inch lines that we can run electrical or any kind of plumbing out to the laneway suite if we ever want to add that in the future. As a final note, I just wanted to give everyone an update on our budget and what's happening there. As you can imagine, the cost of materials over the last couple of months has been absolutely astronomical. Our costs have ballooned by basically three times what we expected for lumber. We had about forty to fifty thousand dollars in the budget and right now our tally for lumber alone is approaching a hundred thousand dollars. So if you're out there and you're building right now, I know the struggle is real, but you know, better to get these projects finished, get them refinanced, get them rented as soon as possible. So we're just forging ahead and that's why we have contingencies in our budgets to make sure that we can account for anything that comes up during the construction process. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video today, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. In the comments section below, I'd love to hear what's going on on your renovation sites. Are you over budget? What kind of materials are you having a hard time getting a hold of, or are they just crazy expensive? And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.